and uh and uh not to not to go toe to toe with these guys not my place to do that but uh you know just knowing how they work and what they do uh, i'm not even in a position where i could could even stand in and, and face these guys toe to toe <clears throat> so uh i guess you, you got to pick your battles and, and and you know know what you're going up against but uh in this case <clears throat> I was talking about uh, the repo markets, derivatives, uh, auto loans, uh, very similar to, like I said, the, the housing bubbles that went on the decade before that, and like I said, the, the dot-com stocks, stocks the decade before that, <clears throat> the 10-year bonds, the, you know, the decade before that, you know, the Keating 5, Milliken, Deloitte, all these companies. <clears throat> uh, I, I talked about in the last video. Everybody's talking about the impeachment, but nobody's really talking about any of this stuff, the trade deal with China, any of these things going on, the Fed bailing out the repo market, things like that. So uh, how does this come to be? You know, like when you go get a loan, uh, most people, they go get an auto loan or, or a house loan. I'll tell you, <clears throat> in order to get a loan, you have to be proven credit worthy. And uh, if you are, in fact, uh, well, then they basically surveil you on, on all fronts with your economic data and determine these things through algorithms, you know, risk assessments as they are called. And uh, in the face of these, these risk assessments, uh, a lot of third party lenders or banks or even Wall Street firms can come in and put derivatives on most of these, these contracts, these loans. Uh, most of them are in fact uh, hidden into your the stipulations of the loan you get. <clears throat> so I guess to explain this further, you go in to buy a car, you know, and, and you get your loan, you, you put five grand down on a vehicle, you know, you get a $40,000 loan for the car. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, in, in the loan, there is an insurance contract for the banks, for the lenders, that you buy and you pay off immediately in, in the satisfaction of this loan. The first money goes to paying this off. And it is more or less a derivative contract, a, a counter risk that is... Uh, offered to Wall Street or other investment firms, you know, where, where people can really bet on when you're going to miss your car payment or when you're going to get your, you know, your car yanked back from you. <clears throat> Same thing with your house 10 years before that, you know, and like I said, 50 million people kicked out of their homes, mostly due to like bank fraud, because these banks were, were starting to get investigated initially and started to shred a lot of these documents and, and then started to force these, these evictions, you know, in 2005, 2010, 2015, as they gotten away with these crimes, they, they had to start forging their official documents that they had and in most cases were using fraudulent uh, non-official copies to, to evict you know millions and millions of people from their homes so like Wells Fargo a lot of these major banks were guilty for this and uh, a lot of them were even guilty for like I said the manipulation of gold and silver or for selling derivatives in the silver market uh, that's some things that I talk about a lot too like gold and silver uh, like <clears throat> for every every ounce that is out there on paper, every paper ounce, you know, the, there is one five hundredth of, of the supply in, in actual metal. Uh, so in other words, you, you go buy gold or s silver, you know, on paper through Wall Street, you know, paper certificates, anything that's not physical where you're not actually holding the metal in your hand. Um, these guys actually have uh, in many instances different scams where they, they are selling multiple times. 500, 600, 700 times uh, the, the same ounce of gold or silver to people on paper, and really there is no physical metal. <clears throat> and uh, if they ever get caught doing this with the Comex or Forex, you know, like Force Majeure or like the Act of God, they can pay back all their stuff in cash and, and really, you know, lose no, save no face or lose no face, whatever you call it. Uh, not to get off on the silver and gold thing, I really was talking about, like you said, the, the auto loans and, and the housing loans. Uh, so, <clears throat> well, let's say you, you get this this loan and you, uh, you know, like I said, five down, 40 on the, on the hook. And, uh, you, you know, as you pay off, most of your down payment will go towards these derivatives or paying this, this shit off. Or most of your first payments of the loan go towards paying off these derivatives initially. The financial institutions paid first. <clears throat> and uh, basically, at, at any point in time, if you do in fact default, uh, the derivative will pay them the the full assessment, the full amount of risk that you've taken out on the loan, right off the get. And of course, the lending institution keeps the amount that you've paid into it, and then they will repossess, repossess the asset as well, whether it's the house or the car, whatever it is. <clears throat> I guess uh, 
you know, they put these housing loans up under these pretexts, knowing what would go on. And, and like I said, they evicted, you know, 45 to 50 million Americans from their homes in the last 15 years. So that's a pretty substantial amount. <clears throat> and then after that round of, of you know, bailouts and bail-ins, and, and really, if you look at like TARP and QE3, most of these these monies went to satisfying these derivative contracts or these covering the lenders and, and certainly, you know, went to Wall Street and not Main Street. Although they were guised under the voting and, and the legislation and the acts of Congress as they were uh, to, to be there for Main Street. And in a sense, <clears throat> they were there to, to try to mobilize credit and, and give credit to people that, that maybe couldn't afford it or uh, that were risky or, or you know didn't have wages or anything to back up the loans that they needed to get. Uh, <clears throat> that, that was how they passed the, the, the bill back in 2008, 2009, and when they start giving the TARP and the bailouts. And, and really what the money went to was the lending institutions and these insurance companies to cover these derivatives and, uh, you know, towards white-collar crimes, as it would be called. Uh, and, and as I say, the FBI is nowhere to even be found on this. The Justice Department, uh, you, you know, basically says these guys are too big to fail and then basically has the Fed bail these guys out. <clears throat> Pretty interesting stuff. And they've been bailing them out, like I said, with QE1 to QE4. Uh, to the tune of $80 billion a month in most cases. So, uh, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So you talk about the $22 trillion the United States is in debt. Most of it is, is from papering over these type of situations. And uh, most of these situations present themselves because there is no tangible uh, checks and balances to these things, you know. So in other words, uh, by taking us off the gold or silver standard, demonetizing these things, uh, they were able to mobilize credit and to mobilize the printing of money to to institute these credits or to satisfy these loans or to you know keep the economy moving through these these smoke and mirror tricks. So uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, you know the, the the lending institutions are covered and the borrowers are really the ones getting screwed on all fronts and and paying for their own eminent destruction and financing it accordingly. <clears throat> and nobody's really talking about this or, or nobody really understands this when they get these loans or, or any of this stuff. It really doesn't come to be until the default happens. And usually at that point in time, the, the, the elements of recourse are diminished for the borrower and uh, the lending institutions are covered at all costs. And I can understand, <clears throat> you know, the concept of risk exposure and stuff like that. I get that, you, you know, uh, there is an issue with that, but the issue is certainly not with the borrowers. Uh, the issue should be, and the point is that they never will talk about this, the, the whole point is to mobilize the, the complicity onto the borrower, to the, to the small person, the, the, the common man, uh, <clears throat> and to absolve the risk of, of these super predator banking institutions that are really, uh, you know, triple dipping in most cases on these, these, these loans. So, um, you know, most people, they, they just say this is the way that the world works. This is how it goes, pal. And they don't even really question these things. Very similar to, like, say, when they use Facebook or Google or any of these FANGS applications and, and surrender their data for the implementation of these, these tactics. Um, <clears throat> they don't even think twice. They don't even understand really what it's all about. But in a sense, uh, that's, that's what these guys get when you get these, these free applications and you, you click I agree. You know, the, the wording into this is, is pretty sinister, and it's all the same group of people. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think this is really why they, they had to do, like, 9-11, was to, you know, not only put into the biometric abscam databases, the facial recognition, uh, the, the, the chipping everybody through their phone or, or whatever else they're trying to do. Um, <clears throat> look at the chips in your credit cards and all these things, man. These are, these are tracking devices. They're doing the same thing with the cash supply, too, so... Uh, really, it's about inventorying every bit of financial recourse or opportunity and, and having these guys not only be able to flip the switch to turn it off on some people or to turn it on for others, <clears throat> but uh, also to use this as a checks and balance against any sort of economic independence that the, the people might have. <clears throat> and this goes back into World War II and even World War I and, and way beyond that. And this has been a lockstep program that these guys have been putting on 
perhaps the largest economic experiment every generation as they keep extending these experiments into the next generations. And, and you know, whether you're talking coming off the gold standard or going on to cryptocurrency or any of these things, ultimately it's the same bankers that are behind these measures. And, and they really try to lend the optic of it being a grassroots thing or the antithesis to the old banking institutions. But really, like I said, it's an Ouroboros, the old guard becoming the new guard. And, uh, you know, people that are questioning these things or, or even pointing out the, the obvious or what should be the obvious to the common man are really being targeted by these these law enforcement institutions. Uh, you know, the same thing like they did with guys like Aaron Schwartz, you know, trying to put out cures to cancer through JSTOR in a Harvard Medical Library. Uh, you know, Big Pharma sends the FBI after this, this guy and puts him on 35 counts of, of plagiarism or whatever the hell it is and, you know, ends up dead in prison or as a dead in his apartment, whatever it was. So... Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how these guys seem to work, you know, is, is to take the common man and, and just bleed him dry, and that's the whole game of this thing. It's it's ushering a new form of, of agricultural feudalism into this technocratic industry. You know, so in other words, uh, you know, controlling the food supply, controlling the money supply, controlling the, the natural resources as they do, as well as controlling the labor resources, the wages of the people, which is absolutely crucial, and then plotting these national databases of labor forces against each other under these kabuki theaters that we know as the political spectrum. Uh, <clears throat> truly amazing. Truly amazing. And the fact that, that really there is no recourse for the common man or that, you know, whenever two are gathered in any cause that, that these guys will send a third party in to destroy them or to, to red tape them or to sandbag them or whatever it is. It's, it's, it's painfully obvious to me, but uh, maybe people don't quite understand the extent of these things, you know. And, uh, you know, if you don't have any historic context as this, as to how this has become what it is, or, or better yet, have any current knowledge of, of what they're doing and where they're going to next, I say that you're really, uh, you know, you're playing checkers uh, and they're playing chess. <clears throat> And I have to say that, that in the face of these things, um, you know, many grown adults, many, many people that have lived, you know, 60, 70 years, you know, and anticipated some degree of trustability or trustworthiness from these lending institutions uh, have been utterly and catastrophically disappointed uh, at all turns, whether, like I said, it's the 80s with the Deloitte and bond markets or the Keating Five and the savings uh, and loan scams. Uh, whether it's the dot-com bubbles, whether it's, you know, Whitewater, Russiagate, Chinagate, any of these things. Uh, ultimately, you're seeing, uh, like it, like with Clinton, you know, they didn't even ask anything about, like, the permanent normalization of trade with China or the NAFTA thing. You know, the media was mum as hell about this stuff, but all they talked about was this impeachment and the, the blowjob gate and all these other things. While they're basically, you know, invading like Iraq and bombing Bosnia and other places in Serbia and, and, and you know, overthrowing countries and, and, you know, better yet, overthrowing this country through these economic loopholes, whether it's the Graham Leach Bliley or the Mobilization or the Telecommunications Act, uh, any of these things, man, <clears throat> it's uh, it's truly sinister that, that, that this is not being busted for RICO or any of these things. And ultimately you know, these guys just consolidate and, and get bigger with their, their endeavors. And really, they use this system to avert their own risk and put the onus onto the actual worker, to the common man. And uh, that's really the point of what they're doing. It's it's why they've, you know, went in after World War II and put in the IMF World Bank or the Marshall Plan. Uh, it's why after World War One they put in the Treaty of Paris or, or like, say, the Dawes or the Young Plans. Uh, it, it is why they've, they've done what they've done historically, uh, shit, dozens and dozens of times. And it seems to be the same group of people behind it. So, uh, and of course you question these group of people for who they are or if they tie associations together. And then they use different instruments of, of their apparatus to go after you, whether it's the FBI, whether it's the Mormon Mafia, whether it's the Vatican, whether it's, uh, you know, the APAC or the, the ADL or any of these groups. So, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, I'm looking into this and, and you know, seeing you know, what's going on in the world and, and trying to bear witness to this stuff and, and really stand against it. And uh, I don't know, sometimes I just feel like, like maybe people don't really see the extent of this to which it's going. And of course, you know, when I lay it out in the manner that I do, you know, people probably are like, wow, he's, he's providing hyperbole or, you know, uh, 
he's he's really upset about this or whatever. Well, <clears throat> I just kind of see where they're going with this whole thing and uh, see where they've been going historically. And uh, I don't know. It's it's alarming. It's 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 damn right shocking. Like I said, it's you know middle of the night and I'm making videos talking about this shit because I can't sleep thinking about it. But uh, really, at the end of the day, it's it's the common man that that wears themselves thin through this insurmountable debt. Like I said, good people have honor. They have ethics. They have codes. They they honor their obligations. They take the onus of this responsibility, even unrighteously, uh, upon themselves. And in many cases, this this onus is unwarranted. It is it's absolutely predatory by these lending institutions and these financial dispossession tactics. And uh, they are designed to do exactly what they are doing. <clears throat> and ultimately, people go to their graves defeated people thinking about, uh, you know, how, how defunct they were economically because they weren't able to, you know, compete in this, this this transitional economy, as it's called. You know, they, they can't work five gigs in the gig economy to, to, to pay their bills and they just get run out, you know, into the streets or into the ground or whatever. So uh, they say the average American, you know, can't afford a $500 medical bill. I know the feeling. I'm right there with them. And everybody else is right there too, and that's a that's a thing about pride is is that most people you know they don't really come off and talk about their problems. They figure nobody wants to hear about this, or that they're too busy, or that they don't have the attention span or the cognitive abilities to understand what they're going through. While we all go through the same struggles, you know, independently, and while we isolate ourselves, and while we get on these phones that are you know firewalled and, and you know run by insiders or people that are are really uh, I don't want to say disingenuous but uh sometimes maybe just underinformed or maybe just not aware of what's really going on and uh well in the face of this i think awareness is the only way you can fight it and um uh, really awareness is the only chance we have in hell of, of, of standing up to these guys and when you do get the awareness of what is truly going on in this world yeah you'll probably want to get out there and, and fight in the streets or do something and and you know the whole point is them to filibuster your outrage until they can misdirect your momentum towards shit that is really irrelevant or, or inconsequential or, you know, they can pitch you against other victims of their strata, you know, feudalism. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing how these guys have departmentalized not only the aspects of risk, but the social engineering and social credit scores and, and social media and, and things the way that they have, uh, using these instruments, which are in fact military weapons and military offerings uh, to look like social media or, or like the, the way of the world or the, the way people feel. And uh, like I said, this is this has been a lockstep program to, to win the hearts and minds through deception of, of, of generations. And uh, it's like mobilizing one generation against the last. And, uh, you know, through these fits of despair or necessity, uh, they can, in fact, you know, march people against their own will or against their own direction or their own ethical standards uh, by these means. Uh, that's really the, the important thing of why they had to take down in World War II Japan and Germany, in my estimation. Uh, these two cultures, <clears throat> historically speaking, are known for their ethics. They're known for their 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 morals. They're known for their principles. They're known as as you know, hardworking, good people. Uh, the the Bushido code we were just talking about that and the honor that's behind that you know death before dishonor you know these are people that that cannot be compromised by this system of usury these are people that cannot be you know well formerly couldn't be impacted by the offerings of the new technocratic world and in many cases the the point of of infiltrating these these existing cultures in the manner that they had whether it's Germany, whether it's Japan, whether it's China, wherever, you know, ultimately uh, even Arabs, uh, you know, the point of, of them infiltrating these idealists or these, these principled people, whether they're principled by religion, whether they're principled by, you know, culture, or whether they're principled just by environment, um, <clears throat> traditionally speaking, they've had a, a code of honor that, that is you know, historically recognized as, as, you know, as what it is, whether it's the Teutonic Knights, whether it's the Bushido Code, any of these things. And um, ultimately, I think that's why they, they have to infiltrate these civilizations and take them down and, and subjugate them to these, well, these economic absurdities that, 
that are known as our, our fiscal policies to this day and age. Uh, had a lot to do, like I said in my last video, with the specie, uh, the, the bullion uh, laws that passed in 33, and, and getting these existing cultures off of gold and silver and putting them onto a central banking fractional reserve fiat usury that is controlled by the same group of, of despots. And uh, as I say, you know, uh, it, it's kind of like the despotism of a dictator, but the, without the accountability of being a public figure. You know, these guys rule in secrecy and in the shadows, and, and they're not even scrutinized. You know, they send puppets out there. They send, you know, billionaire proxies out there that that are at the top level of the pyramid in our scope. But in reality, these guys are probably mid-level and, and following marching orders of, of this cabal of secret societies and using, like I said, colleges and institutions to not only hook people onto insurmountable student loans and debts, but to comply them to the system of, of collusion after they, they graduate and, and become systems managers for this group. So whether you're talking doctors, lawyers, uh, scientists, engineers, teachers, uh, any of the shit, uh, economists, uh, it's, it's all done this way. And uh, ultimately, the, the people that are educated to embrace this are, are truly janissaries of their day. They are, are killing their own kind and don't even realize it. And in most cases are, are being you know hoodwinked by this cabal to direct their energy against their own kind and, and to institute these, these type of absurdities into the, uh, 